A lot of people talk about the beginning of the universe. Very few talk about the end. The universe is about 13.8 billion years old. Nine billion years ago was the peak of star formation in the universe, when there were more and more stars being born all the time. And since that time, it's been slowing down. And so you can actually calculate that the stars existing in the universe right now, or the stars that have already previously existed in the universe, account for 90% of the stars that ever have been or ever will be. And so from now until the end of time, the universe will just be working on that last 10% of stars. So we're already really close to the end in terms of what the universe is producing. Uh, it's, it's almost over. I've been studying cosmology for a long time, and over the course of my career, I've kept running into interesting questions about the end of the universe. In my book, The End of Everything, Astrophysically Speaking, I talk about five different possibilities for the end of the universe. The big crunch, the heat death, then there's the big rip, and then there's vacuum decay, and then bouncing cosmologies. The most likely end of the universe is the heat death. It's the one that's sort of the default scenario. It's a sort of slow fade where the universe just kind of fades out over trillions and trillions of years. The reason we consider the heat death to be the most likely is because it matches all the data we have and is in some sense a very simple idea. So it's just a straight extrapolation from what we see now. So right now we know that the universe is expanding. And we also know, as of sort of the late 90s, that the expansion of the universe is speeding up. And we don't know exactly why it's speeding up. Whatever is making the expansion speed up, we call that dark energy. And we think it might be just a sort of basic property of space that it has this kind of expansion built into it. We call that the cosmological constant. Then what you find is over time, galaxies get farther and farther and farther apart from each other. Everything gets more and more isolated over time. And then because everything is very isolated, the stars that are already in a galaxy kind of burn out and there are no new stars, no new gas being brought in to make new stars. And so the stars eventually burn through their fuel and die and fade away. And particles will decay eventually. Black holes will evaporate. And so you end up with a universe that's just increasingly cold and dark and empty. Right now, the Hubble Space Telescope orbiting around the Earth can point in some direction and stare for long enough and it'll see a bunch of little distant galaxies. In the future, in about 100 billion years, the Hubble Space Telescope could do that and just will not see anything. And then over time, it'll be trillions and trillions of years when the last star burns out. And then, you know, more and more years when the black holes start to evaporate. It's a very, very long time from now. When people hear the term heat death, they often think of, you know, a fiery death because they hear heat. But when we talk about it as physicists, the heat in that phrase really means uh, heat in the physics sense, which means disordered energy. And so what happens is that all that's left in the universe at some point is this tiny trace amount of, of waste heat of everything that ever happened in the cosmos. And you end up with a universe that's very, very cold and dark and empty and, and nothing really happens anymore. Because the second law of thermodynamics says that entropy has to increase moving forward in time, that implies that if the entropy is already at its maximum, it cannot increase anymore. And so the arrow of time is lost. You can't say that we're moving forward in time anymore if entropy is not increasing anymore. In that sense, once you get to the heat death, once you get to that maximum entropy state, time doesn't really have a meaning. You can have scenarios where space carries on. The heat death doesn't destroy space and time. It makes time meaningless eventually, but space carries on. Is that an end? I think that's an end because everything in the universe is over. You know, when you study the end of the universe, you start to wonder maybe there is no, there maybe there's nothing that's gonna come around at the end and make it all make sense and make it all worthwhile. And so it does kind of motivate thinking about how should we find meaning in the moment, somehow that's not connected to a final wrap up, just some way of 
existing now and finding it in a way that's really independent of whatever the end of the story is.